Hi guys, welcome back to AIC. I am so excited to engage with you guys again, uh, mostly about actuarial science. I decided to shoot this video and kind of dive into some of the popular questions people ask me regarding actuarial science, um, whether it's a career or a studying uh, to become one. So I'm gonna be reading from my uh, laptop. I'm gonna be reading some of the common questions that people ask me either on Instagram or in my comment sections on YouTube. One thing I've realized is that I've been receiving quite some traffic on my actuarial science related videos. And being that actuarial science and creating awareness and like informing people, especially uh, people from minority groups that otherwise don't have really access to this kind of information, this being the main purpose of this channel, I wanted to like just make one video kind of just tackling most of the questions that people ask regarding the field. Yeah, so the first and the most popular question, uh, this is more like even people when I meet them and they ask me, oh, what do you do? I'm like, no, I'm starting to be an actuary. I'm an actuarial analyst right now. And they're like, what is that? Like, who is that? What's actuarial science or who is an actuary? Honestly, I find it difficult to answer this question. And it's mostly because of what actuaries do, right? Actuaries are very diverse. They are very flexible when it comes to the type of work they do. And it's kind of very hard to um, just bottle them up into one thing or like describe them with one thing because we could have other actuaries doing different kinds of work. But I'll say the broad, the broad description, or I guess the broad idea of what actuaries do, they attempt to quantify risk and mitigate that risk. So basically actuaries work in insurance companies, investment banks, wherever um, risk is needed to be quantified and actually mitigated. And I think that's mostly also just traditional actuaries. We have um, different kinds of actuaries as well that may be considered non-traditional in data analytics, in finance, for example, they work on projecting costs, projecting uh, finances uh, in the companies. But I will say that's, that's the broader, or I guess the general description of what actuaries do. And people, when you talk about risk, they automatically thing it's risk managing which is not wrong but it's broader than that you know it also has to do with like so even if we are managing this risk how do we actually uh try to calculate and use the statistics and the data to um look in the future to probabilize future events you know like i said actuaries work in different kinds of industries um, I think that's also another misconception is that actuaries only work in insurance companies. Actuaries can work in anything basically because I feel like in the corporate world or I guess in the business world or even just the world we are in right now, there's risk to everything, right? Even with everything going on, climate change, COVID, this is all like stuff that, that actuaries can actually dive into and kind of try to mitigate this kind of risk and the effects to society. Uh, you might meet another actuary who might define it different, who might define it differently, and that's also okay. Like I said, it's really hard to answer this question sometimes because of the broader views to what an actuary can do. And how do you, the second question is how do I start taking exams? Um, this is a very good question. I will say that definitely start taking exams if you are already doing your undergrad degree uh, most people start taking their exams whether independently or even just like if your school has a program for it i went to a liberal arts college we had a natural science major but it was a fairly new program it wasn't too established so it was a little bit harder to have like a wider group or like i guess a system that i'm like okay these are the classes that i need to take with my fellow actuary people to pass this specific exam yes we did those kind of courses but it wasn't specific to like 
the actual actual exam it's material and content that shows up in some of these exams but you still have to do a lot of independent studying whereas you have some schools and universities where um the students have a really great support and they have larger classes and groups they um have to do specific courses for a specific exam and the professors give them like a time frame of when they can take those exams and so forth but when should you test start taking exams start taking exams during your undergrad definitely if you found out about actuarial science late it's not too late to start you can start whenever um actually my mentor is someone who started taking exams even after like having like a job like an established job already so these are independent exams you can take anytime even in your master's postgrad working full-time when you are 40 years whatever it is that is your journey or i guess situation how many exams do i need to get a full-time job uh, generally people say you need at least two exams but i think the standard is also increasing okay there are two things first thing i think the standard is slightly increasing in the past few years because of like the amount of people like coming into the field so the two the first two exams i think they are becoming much more easier to obtain well they are difficult but in terms of like the upper level exams comparing the upper level exams and the lower level exams more people are able to tackle the first two exams before uh, graduating and so the standards to get full time are kind of around that but mostly have been increasing so you might find people applying for full time jobs before graduating from college with four exams five exams and so forth the only thing is that sometimes people don't want to to take too many exams during college without having like valuable work experience because it becomes hard for even the companies or the organizations to quantify your level or i guess your roles um in the company but i would say two exams are sufficient for you to get a full time i got a full time with two exams passed and it's also common it's very common um like i said it's just if you want maybe to build a comparative advantage for yourself then continue taking exams during your undergrad yeah and then another thing that I, the second thing that i was gonna say is also like i think organizations are now trying to look beyond just exams when people apply for actuarial work they are looking a lot at, at a lot of other skills and competencies for example leadership collaboration teamwork business and financial acumen some of these things are really 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 important in the actuarial world or just like tackling actuarial work and so beyond passing exams they want to know that you have these other competencies and you are actually able to develop them even if you don't have all of them right now applying for a full-time job so that's the second thing with applying for full-time job yeah so moving on to the next one how long do do exams take this is such a common question not only from the people who are interested in taking the uh career but also family and friends who ask me oh when am i finishing to study am i ever gonna finish and honestly the answer is that there's no end to learning <laughs> but yeah in terms of how long do the exams take it really depends on your individual progress but there are obviously also very generic limitations to the exam taking process for example how often an exam is offered and how many exams your company allows you to take per year um so how many the question itself is very difficult because you find people that say it took them 13 years to get their fellowship which is like the top 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 qualification and you find people that say it took them six years to get their fellowship and like i said it just depends on your progress like how quickly are you progressing through your exams i will say that person my goal is at least to get my designation in the next three years designation is like the one before the fellowship and normally to get that you need to pass seven exams and i think do three modules i'm not sure if this is consistent with the new 
uh, ASA pathway but I think the old one that's how it was I think it's like seven exams and three modules to get the ASA um, and so right now I'm studying for my fourth exam and then depending on if I pass it and so forth then it means that I can progress faster towards my designation but yeah I would say it really just depends how fast you're progressing but also you can't take too many uh, exams or sit for too many exams in one year generally people take two exams per year so if you count let's say you come out of college with two exams right and then if you have to pass uh, two exams per year for example that means that you have at least two and a half years to get through uh, the extra five exams and then you have to add the modules also the crazy thing is you have to wait for I think about two months to wait for your official results so that kind of also affects how fast you're going through the exam journey so definitely uh, I will say after college maybe three ex uh, sorry after college three years for you to get your designation that's assuming you have at least maybe two exams passed or something like that yeah but most people uh, tend to get their designation faster after college especially if they had a lot of exams passed during undergrad and then with the fellowship you do three other exams which are more specialized depending on the industry you are in whether it's like health life investment property and casualty um right now i'm sort of speaking in terms of like soa or the study of actuaries like path because that's what i intend to pursue and that's what i mostly educate myself on and yeah so definitely after you get your designation you do i think at least three more exams again and then modules and i think attending a seminar for you to get your fellowship so that can also take three years so it can take around six years after graduating to get your fellowship so yes the journey is long and it takes a lot of sacrifice it takes a lot of a lot of determination and to my family and friends who ask me when i'm going to finish studying this no end to learning because even after earning my fellowship i still feel like i'll still want to like get educated in other areas of my life you know um whether it means like going through a formal education or just like studying other other kind of courses um yeah and then how much do actuaries make this is also a difficult question because i think with the actual science career there's a very wide gap between what an entry-level actuary makes and what a qualified actuary makes but then in between there there's a lot it's it the progression of your salary i guess increases faster generally because you are actually rewarded based on the exams that you are passing based on your experience as well so let's say if you have been in the company for two years and you now have your designation for example you are likely to be promoted most people that i know get promoted with that kind of combination and then that means your salary also increased but also your salary has been increasing based on the number of exams passing so every time you pass an exam your organization adjusts your compensation based on the exam passed and every exam has di has a different amount so how much do actuaries make um like reading on blogs and everything i will say that i think lowest maybe in 50s so like fifty thousand per year uh but generally i'll say 65k to 78k is probably like an entry-level actuarial salary i'm not sure but i think according to the blogs that i've been reading and that also depends on the industry you're in some industries pay more i think pnc is uh seen to be high paying um in terms of entry level pnc which is property and casualty it also depends on location for example you can compare um someone getting a job like entry level like actual job for example in minnesota and someone who's 
getting an entry-level job in New York like when I was applying for full-time I think I had two offers my other offer was in New York and this offer was in Philly like I feel like most of the compensation difference was based on the fact that it was obviously in New York and they have to like compensate you based on the living standard in that state or I guess in that city so you should also take that into consideration just because the entry level salary is higher doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be like i guess going home with a lot of money based on the city you are within but yeah generally that's the starting salary and then that's assuming maybe you have like two exams passed or something like that and then as you progress your salary increases but definitely most companies once you have your designation most people start to earn 90k upwards i would say maybe six figures i don't know i haven't really done much research on that but i've been reading blogs on people putting salaries there and most people with their designations actually get six figures and then once you have your fellowship you definitely definitely have six figures once you have your fellowship it's six figures maybe 150k upwards depending on your industry depending on your city maybe if you're in california and new york city you might uh, get 200k upwards it really depends on that and also experience plays a major role obviously if you get your fellowship um six years in your job and let's say you have your fellowship and you have been in your job for 10 years you guys are not gonna earn the same salary and that's just common sense so that also de it depends on that so people some people might make more than that some might make less than that but typically that's the range and that's why i'm saying the range is a little bit wider because you get like an entry level for example getting 70k and then you have like an a qualified actuary with their fellowship and more experience getting like 200k but the progression in between goes very fast because of the exam taking and experience combination when it comes to rewards definitely bonuses as well most actually say they get bonuses they get bonuses and they get salary increment based on merit so take into consideration that you get rewarded on your work as well so yeah um how is the financial support for both college and exams i will say for college for me speaking from my experience i've done a lot of videos on this already i had a full scholarship but speaking in general i'll say that for college it really depends on the schools which schools you are going to their financial aid and maybe how well equipped you are like with securing external financial uh, aid and to i guess my non-american uh, followers or people who watch this most of them ask me like how do i apply for scholarships and bursaries i would definitely say first of all reach out to the school and see how they uh, can financially support you most of the american colleges don't give full financial scholarships they can give full tuition but it's hardly they give full financial aid and when i mean full financial is like considering books considering room boarding miscellaneous expenses most of them hardly cover all of that even if they give you full tuition uh, scholarships and most of the times tuition especially if you're going to a private college is like half of your semester bill so you still need to like come up with the other half of your semester bill and that can be a hassle but they can have different kinds of programs uh you can get external bursaries from companies or like family members or like foundations so definitely try that out when it comes to college and when it comes to exam support um the society of actuaries actually has a really good program for supporting minority groups so they help reimburse people on like exam registrations and i i guess exam resources as well if you are from a specific minority group if you pass an exam or if you i think if you get a five which is like not a passing mark but it's almost their mark so they reimburse you on your exam and i think resources as well there's also um international association of black actuary so like people want to get into from this community um they also do reinvestments and they have programs as well that run to help out people with obtaining studying resources for the first two exams 
and then in terms of if you're already in your full-time job I will say at least 90% of companies that recruit actuaries offer some sort of financial support for their exams. Most of them offer support for buying materials. They offer support for registering for the materials. They offer support for like, um, like traveling expenses. For example, if you have to write uh, a little bit further away from where you live, traveling expenses for seminars, things like that. So with the exam support, if you already have a full-time job, it's easy to obtain that because your company is highly likely to support you through the whole process without any hassle or without having to pay a specific percentage of those expenses. So yeah, and that's it. That's me sort of just tackling most of the common questions you guys ask me um if you have any more questions that you think i haven't properly addressed or you think that i should address i can include it maybe in a different video but i'm happy to communicate to you guys about actuarial science about the career about the path and everything any other actuaries out there watching this video feel free to add any additional information or maybe clarifying anything in the comments i will love to also learn more as i go through this journey thank you guys for watching and see you next time